All right, let me get my uh, screen shared and I'll pull up the, um, the stuff that we need. We'll get rolling. Okay, so this is um, a walkthrough on Boomwriter and getting your, your students writing on Boomwriter. So I'll go ahead and go over that with you. So really Boomwriter is a writing tool that can cover any type of writing you would do in the classroom, regardless of content, research, narrative, descriptive, um, short answer, anything you can do in the classroom, you can transfer to Boomwriter. So we have three tools. Um, stories is probably our most popular. Um, we also um, in our tools have assignments, which is the most versatile for a cross content area. And then we also have the journals feature. All of these three tools um, work very similarly. So don't stress that you're gonna pick the wrong one, but and we'll look at what you can do with each of these three tools. So we'll go ahead and start. This is your dashboard. So when you log in, this is what you would see once you've got some classes. So you can simply just click create an activity and then choose. So we'll start with assignments because it is the most versatile. And then you're gonna get a little menu. You can choose to keep voting on or off. Um, I'm gonna keep it off for now and we'll talk about what voting is a little bit later. So this will be a history assignment um, and then you can change your content. Do you want grading? We do have some basic rubrics you can use. So you can choose to use those and then give it a name. Now, all of this you can change in your settings page. So again, don't stress if you feel like you need to change it. So we'll go to the um, activity settings. And then on the left-hand side, you will see um, where you can create new sections. So there's my assignment title, the Earth's continents, and then I can name each section. So if I'm gonna do one about the Earth's continents, I can do one for North America. I can include a link for my kids to look at and some instructions. Um, I also have options to change the length of the assignment if I really want the kids to write a certain amount. If you're a Google school and you use Google Drive, you can um, also upload things in Google Drive. So if I go into my account and I want to upload a video that I put into Google Slides, I can do that. The kids will have access to that there. You can also choose to upload images up to five. So if you have any kind of visual reference you want your kiddos to have, that can go there for your kids to see. Then you can save all of these settings as you go. Um, you can also add a word bank. I love this for vocabulary. And so as the kids use those words that you input, it'll kind of uh, highlight in their writing to show that, you've done, that they have included it. You also have the ability to change um, due dates and starting. I will say the visual looks a little bit different now because we've changed kind of the layout, but the, in, but the information is the same. So this is a preview of what the kids would see. Um, there, there's that you can see the image, you can see the vocab. And all of that's there. So those are the main settings um, and the instructions. It's kind of the, um, it's super easy. You can schedule it if you want to, to set it at a future date or you can set it live. Setting it live means that you're gonna go ahead and push it to your kids now. And as soon as you do that, they can access it. So you can create more sections. So if I'm gonna do the continents, maybe I wanna do one for all seven continents and I can create sections. We'll name those. Uh, and then you can also see that right now I have these sections in draft. It means that they are not live. And as soon as I hit live, then my students can see that. So you can choose whether you want them to go live all at one time and you want maybe the kids to work at their own pace or you just wanna do one at a time. Really, however you wanna do that's fine. So and then you can see right now in my overview section, um, I can see the kids. Now on the bottom left is kind of a menu where you can alter the, uh, the subject, whether you want grading on or off, you can view the rubric as well. And these four buttons in the current view, they're up in the upper right hand corner, uh, but you can generate a PDF, which will allow you to kind of print off a student's work and you have the flexibility to choose what you want to include in that PDF. Super helpful for documentation purposes or for IEPs. If you have multiple classes, like maybe you're middle school, like I was or high school, you can just duplicate to other classes. So you don't need to recreate the wheel every time because we all know that's a pain. Um, and then you can send that to your other classes as well once you've created it once. You also have the ability to share to Google Classroom if you're a Google school and you're using that tool. And what that will do is give a link to your kids. And then you can also share to your resources. So if it's a really cool activity or your kids liked it and you wanna share with other teachers, um, then you can put that in the resources and share with other teachers as well. So this is your overview section. Let's go ahead and take a look now at what the kiddos see when they log in. So this is Tyree's dashboard. So here's uh, my class. And then there you can see the assignment that we just created, the Earth's continents. So there's his activity. 
and he'll, it'll say you can start writing. So he'll click on that. And then on the right hand side are all the instructions. There's the link that I included there for him to go look at. And as I scroll down all the other things that we uploaded for him, they'll be there as well. So there's the activity resource that I put in there. There's um, the rubric and the image. So all of those pieces are there and he can refer to them as needed and then he can start writing. So once Tyree is done writing, and this will auto save as the kids write, although he can click it as well, and he's ready to submit, he just says I'm done. And then on the teacher side, when we go back in, we'll be able to see the status of those of those students in their writing. So there's my class. Um, I can see that it's color coded so you can kind of see where students are in the process. Here's Tyree. So notice that there's a word count and that will update as he writes more, which is super helpful. One of my favorite features um, to kind of monitor if the kids are progressing. And then I can go and click on him and read his entry. So on the left, it'll kind of give me a rundown of his progress when he turned it in, all that business. On the right is the rubric. So when I'm ready to grade, I can, I can open those and I can choose and grade and then I can read his entry. So let's say I, he really hasn't done what I wanted him to do. I can request revisions. I can say, hey, that's great Tyree, but I want you to do some more, share that with him. And then when he logs back in and goes to that assignment, it's gonna say, hey, you need to revise your entry. Your teacher wants you to revise. So he'll click on that and um, it'll tell him it's flagged. He can click on the button and then he knows what the instructions are. He can re-click any time. But let's say he like still has questions. He can click on that chat feature and he can reach me directly and ask a question that way as well, which is great if you have kids that are still virtual. A lot of schools are still virtual. So then back over here on the teacher side of things, we'll go ahead and look at another activity. So we looked at one for kind of social studies. Um, let's look at one for science. This is for the scientific method. This one's already created and it will be the same process. And you can see the sections are all, um, the whole method all, all chunked out. And then the instructions are there for each section. And right now they're all in draft. So I could hit those and, and schedule them to go live whenever I'd like in whatever order I'd like. But all of that information is there. Um, another activity, this is more of an ELAR one would be for persuasive writing. I taught middle school and my eighth graders struggle with persuasion. So this would be a really great way to chunk it for them and really have them focus on just that one piece. I just want you to do the claim right now. I just want you to do your support. Um, and so you can take those and chunk them. And again, you can use those revision tools to kind of keep that process going, to keep them revising. So you could have them do it all in different chunks, or if you wanted to do the whole essay in one, you could do that. And again, all of those same features are there, the ability to do PDFs, the ability to share to Google, Google Classroom, et cetera. So let's look at one more. This is actually not an assignment. This is a journal. So um, it's one of my favorites. It's Fun Write Fridays. And I did it last year with my seventh graders. Every Friday, they get like a different journal prompt. Sometimes it would be just a free, a free write. But you could add on to this as the year progresses. So here, there's a picture that I've um, given them. And I want them to write a story or a poem about this picture. Um, and then they would write about that. This would be a fun activity to actually do voting. And we'll talk about that in a minute. So I could turn the voting on, I could toggle that on, the kids could vote on their favorite response to that journal prompt would be fun. And the voting is anonymous, which is nice. And we'll cover voting in more detail in a little bit. And right now there's just two sections, but if I wanted to continue to create new sections, I could keep going and maybe kind of do different prompts every Friday for till the end of the year. The really cool thing about journals and stories is that they can both be printed and published into like soft cover books which is really, really cool. So let's go back into our dashboard. We're gonna hit create activity. And this time we'll look at stories because this one runs a little bit differently. So these have the ability to be published into a book, which I mentioned a moment ago, and it's called, we'll show you what pieces are covered in a published book. There's kind of the end result. And if you wanna create your own story start, you could do that. Um, so if you've got them saved or you can use a boom writer story start. So these are what they sound like. Um, you, you can kind of filter and look at different views, but there's tons of different story starts to get kids started. It's gonna give them the beginning of the story and then they'll finish the middle and end. Uh, we've got some by Jeff Kinney. We've got some by Nick Cullen. We've got one from um, Chunk from the Goonies, Jeff Cohen, which is cool. It's one of my favorites. So this one is Allie and Coyote. So we'll use this one. I would recommend keeping voting on for this one unless you just want your student to write individually. Um, but this is really designed to have the voting on. The kids love it. And so we'll do that. We'll talk about that. You can keep the grading on or off for this one, depending on 
what you're wanting to do with the activity, we'll, we'll put it on and do narrative. And we'll go ahead and continue to our activity settings. So when you log in, not log in, but when you go to the screen, this is gonna look a little bit different because the story starts pre-populated and that's not gonna change. The kids can't change it. Um, and then there's chapter two. So I like to use story starts to assess skills we're already learning. So I think it's a great way to have fun, but still apply those skills, whether it be using commas or writing with vocab words. So we'll keep voting on, here's our overview. So you can see I've already got some kids who have written. So we'll go ahead and um, take a look. Now to do voting, you have to have at least three students approved. Anybody, they can all vote, but you have, a, have, have to have at least three voting in order for voting to work. Then we'll end writing and start the voting. And it's gonna tell you, hey, you've only approved three out of seven. That's fine, I know. So when you're ready and you've approved all of your students writing that are gonna be included, you can start voting. And then you'll notice that it's, um, it's kind of color coded. You're in the voting process. So this is your side. Now, when the kids log back in, here's Carla's dashboard. So she's going to go back into our class and she'll see there's Ali and Coyote and it'll tell her, hey, here's chapter two. You can start voting and she'll be like, yay. And then depending on how many um, kids you have that have approved, they're going to vote in batches. So there's only two entries here. Um, notice there's no names because it is anonymous. So she'll vote um, and it may ask them to vote again. They do have to read them all in order to vote, then she'll pick her favorite. So again, if there were more students, she'd be given more batches. And then once she votes, she's earned boomer bucks, the kids can dress their avatars and they like that. And so they can use those boomer bucks for. So here we'll go back over to the teacher side. And let's say they've all voted. So I'm gonna go ahead and end voting and it's gonna pop up and show me who my winners are. So Carla happened to win this round. Um, and you'll see the top three winners. The kids, when they log in, will only see who the actual winner of that chapter was. So when Carla logs back in, um, and you'll notice it's no longer there because now it's a past assignment. So she'll have to go into the class and choose past assignments, and then Allie and Coyote. And she'll click on that, and she'll click on chapter two, and it'll tell her she's the winner. And because she won, then she earns extra boomer bucks. So it'll look different for the other kiddos who log in because obviously you only have the one first place. So if Tyree logs in, he will see, it'll say, hey, this Carla won. So that's really cool. And then Carla's chapter for chapter two becomes the basis of chapter three. So you really only wanna make sure you are, I'm gonna go ahead and pause that, um, that you are just setting one chapter live at a time because now that Carla has one chapter two, that will become the basis for chapter three and the kids will all write, write based on Carla's winning chapter two. But when they finish the story, um, then they are able to kind of publish it, which is really exciting. So I'm gonna minimize that screen a little bit. And then if you have, if there's any questions, I'm happy to take questions now uh, or go back over anything that, um, that maybe you want me to, to go back over and cover. So I'm going to so I'm just going to check on the chat side um, and, and if you are, are joining a little bit later um, welcome and we just got done talking about the different the different parts of, of boom writer and walking through those things and I'd be more than happy to go back over that with you if you have any questions over over that but this is kind of a time that I've set aside for that, that question and answer. So if there's anything that you would like to throw in the chat section. Awesome, I'm glad, I'm glad. So, and I do have my friend Ken in the chat. So he's, um, he's helpful as well. If you've got any questions, he can answer as well. He did just upload a student onboarding guide to kind of help you get started. Um, and then if, Yes, he just put my name as Amanda at boomwriter.com and you can always reach me and I'd be more than happy to walk you through and help you with any of that um, as you go through. So any questions? Yes, um, absolutely. So the, there was a question in the chat, will, will there be a recording? Yes, the recording will go out um, either this afternoon or in the morning. So if you, if you got in a little bit late, no worries. Um, I totally understand that our time as teachers is precious and it's a hot commodity sometimes. So yes, I'll send the recording out. Um, and then if, if you were, if you wanted to stay on after, I'd be more than happy to help you with that as well. Um, or email me and we can chat and 
really whatever works for you. I can be really flexible. Yes, the pricing guide. Absolutely, I can share that now, and, and I'll get that sent out after um, after the webinar, after the walkthrough. Um, basically, we have two levels of pricing. There's a basic plan and a complete plan. Uh, basic is twelve ninety nine a month, and complete is fourteen ninety nine. But I will get that sent out in an email. Absolutely, um, and then obviously there's a few more features that are available on the complete plan complete plan and you will have the option to purchase one month at a time or you can purchase a chunk so if you know hey i want to do three months at a time the, um, basically the more months you purchase at a time the, you get a little bit of a discount which is nice so, but i will for sure get that sent out i'm so glad you guys are excited about it i love this tool um, in fact, I have my uh, third grader, I have her on it just at home just to write extra practice and she loves it too. So I have her writing and she's always yelling at me too when I have her write, mom, you have to go approve my writing because oh, that was something else that'd be cool to mention as well. So you do have to approve their writing in order for them to get the boomer bucks. So I don't know you guys' situation, but you know, when I was teaching in the spring when our kids were using a different, I think, a canvas was the LMS that our school was using and I would have like kids submitting because it shows you submitted work but it would be blank so you're like that's not helpful um and then you're, you know the parents I have blank work so to in order to get around those smart kids who might submit work just to get the boomer bucks um it's got to be approved by you before they can actually have access to those bucks so they can't just submit anything and move on which is nice it kind of kind of keeps them um accountable a little bit as well so, and Ken did just, show, I know, I love it too. Yes, it's a great feature. And Ken just shared um, the website to the pricing page um, in the chat. So that'll be there as well. But I love that feature. And then the other thing that I love about Boomwriter is just the ability to have everything so neat and concise. I tried um, with my kids for years to journal and really struggled because I'm not um, an always and like on the minute kind of person. So my kids would turn their journals in and I would have the best of intentions, but I have, you know, kids at home too. And you know how things get busy and then you just kind of forget, but having the journals and have everything virtual, it makes it so much easier A, to transport because you're not having to carry anything physical um, and then be able to read and, and comment back, whether it's revision requests or you just leave comments for the kids. I mean, what a great way to get to, to you know, get to know your kids on a personal level and, and have that relationship building. Um, in a way that's safe for the kids. So they can, a lot of times kids will put more in writing than they ever will tell face-to-face. -face. So that's nice too, just be able to build those relationships with your students as well. Um, but then have that documentation. I, something else I struggled with as a teacher was um, all the students I had that were under the, um, the SPED umbrella and all their IEPs and kids in their 504 plans and keeping all of that information straight because you know we're you know, legally obligated to take care of that and get to their goals. And a lot of them would have writing goals. And this is a great way to document that because you can hop back in and pull up their stuff and print off a PDF of their writing and kind of track it over time. It's all in one place. And instead of like, you know, filing through graded work that you've kept or whatever. So that's really nice too, is it kind of keeps it all there for you. So I love that as well. Any other questions? I mean, I could talk about this all day. So yeah, this use is great to use for multi-content, um, different grades. You can use, I mean, we have people, I know it's recommended for grades two to eight, but we've seen uh, people look at doing this up to high school. So even some in college. So I don't wanna take up too much of your time. Um, I know that your time is precious. So I'll, you know, if you, if you want, if you have questions that you want me to answer, I'm happy to stick around, you know, otherwise just, you know, look out for the, the recording in your email.